Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal, or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the Doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, Masters, Mistresses. Hi. Dr. Alex here, and welcome to a video on how to make an audiobook for Audible, Amazon by extension, and also iTunes, among others. Being a lowly independent content producer, I'm always keen to promote any avenue available to get your work out there for as little cost to you as the producer as possible, hence why I have in the past produced series of my written work on YouTube as series there, and also published them via Amazon in book form, in Kindle book, paperback, and hardback forms. Of course, I'm talking about The Doctor Season 12, The Doctor Season 13, and even The Doctor Regenerations Past, which are all my old stories bundled together in book form. I have to give credit where credit is due to Jeff Bezos for making this possible for everyone out there. I'm sure he's not doing it out of the kindness of his heart, and with an eye to making a profit, in fact, and uh, thank you very much, because I'm sure you're not making much profit off my work, given the tiny, tiny sales figures I have. But nevertheless, credit to Jeff Bezos for giving people, everyone, the possibility of publishing without having to go through the rigmarole of the insular, nepotistic world of mainstream publishers. Now, I've made videos in the past outlining in certain contexts how to produce books on Amazon and get your papery versions out there, as well as Kindle and hardback versions. But weirdly, I had not produced any audiobook versions, despite the fact that I basically had the audio content already ready available to go, if I just put in a little bit of work. And so I finally did this with The Doctor Season 12, much as I'd been encouraged to do for a long time by a lot of my friends saying, why on earth don't you publish it as an audiobook, it being already out there as a YouTube series, read to camera virtually an audiobook in chapter form already. And so having done so, I wanted to show as many people as possible how to do this as well. I want everyone to get their content out there as freely and as easily as possible. When there is so much lacklustre stuff put out by the mainstream these days, I think we should, all of us, have the opportunity to put our own, in many cases, better work out there for others to enjoy. Before I go any further, I'll quickly outline the different sections of this video to make it easier to flick between them, and hopefully in the description there will be a timestamp for each section. Obviously we're starting now with the intro, which I'll continue with a little bit longer. The next section will be getting your own audio in order. The next section after that will be Get Yourself on ACX, which is basically the company name for Audible, which is a subsection of Amazon. They're linked together, and I'll talk about that a bit further when I get to that section. The next section is Record Additional Audio, if needed, which it will be. The next section will be Get Your Audio to Audible Standard, because you have to pass their own quality control checks. I'll talk about that in a bit, even in the intro section in a moment. And the final section I've called Odds and Ends because that's just talking about various idiosyncrasies and weirdness with Audible themselves and iTunes as well. There's some weirdness that I'll talk about right at the end to do with getting your stuff out there and visible. Minor hurdles, but worth talking about. I'll just round off the introduction by talking a little bit about something that initially filled my heart with dread when I read it. I looked up online how you go about publishing audiobooks and Audible and ACX came up, but I could see comments saying it's impossible to get the audio quality up to the standard necessary for Audible. You need to have a proper recording studio. You cannot meet Audible's criteria for noise. And I thought, oh, heck, really? Uh, that sounds like an impossible bar to reach. Now, I say this because the first one I've turned into an audiobook, the only one so far, the Doctor Season 12, when recorded as a YouTube series, was done in my garden shed, a metal shed, 
on primitive equipment. I mean, the microphone I'm using now is a Shure PG48, a cheap microphone. It's about £20 to buy new, if you look around enough. This was itself plugged into an Ederol audio capture unit, a 24-bit interface between the microphone and the laptop in which I'm recording everything, including this. The laptop itself being an aging ThinkPad T420, and I think a lot of Season 12 is actually recorded on some even older ThinkPad laptops. But this was the height of my technical expense I'd forked out. And as I say, it was recorded in a garden shed, frequently a metal shed where it was raining outside, and there are in fact some bits where the rain crept into the audio recordings. And so I thought, there's no way you can get this up to the right standard. Even though the audio was fine, it's not what I'd say an Abbey Road studio would produce, um, which is what the comments seemed to be suggesting you needed. This is not true. As I will show you now, I brought the audio up to a standard I felt was good enough, and then through uploading it to Audible themselves, I then raised it to their standard. But this was not an impossible feat, as you shall find out. So, in short, the point of this video is to encourage you all to make your own audio books and publish them through ACX, which is basically a subsection of Amazon. Get your own audio in order. As mentioned before, comments online seem to suggest you needed an unreasonable and professional level of audio recording in order to get past Audible's own quality control standards. This is not true. Of course, it does help if you already have a whole bunch of stuff recorded already, as I did, because I already had it as a YouTube series. Otherwise, you will have to record your own material. And again, I don't know how much it would benefit to have professional actors doing this work. In my case, I was lucky enough that my own reading of my own work was acceptable enough, uh, even with me putting in my own characterization of characters in there. And I was also fortunate enough to have additional readers to help me with certain other parts. In season 12, one other additional reader... Ella Dimitru, who is also the editor of the book form, and in fact the editor of the entire series in terms of production as well. But you may or may not want to get professional readers to do your work. That is entirely up to you, and it depends, of course, on what resources you have available. That said, whoever reads it, the audio must be of an acceptable quality. As I said, I was aware, even putting it out as a YouTube series, that there were audio issues that I can hear as I'm listening to it. So the first thing I would recommend you do before you even ever present it to Audible for their assessment is clean up your own audio. Now, when I'm recording, I've already gone through the audio setup I used. I also use Audacity as my audio recording device. I record my audio and video together separately though. Then I sync up the audio I've recorded using the microphone and Audacity with the audio from the camera, which is of a lower quality. It has been necessary on occasions to nick bits of the audio from the camera version, and that can be brought up to an acceptable standard, but if you want the very best standard, I would record the audio separately, and if you're ever going to make a video, sync them up afterwards so you've got good quality audio and good quality video, captured with devices specific to those purposes. As it stood, I had reasonably good audio, but it needed to be cut into a form that was more acceptable for Audible, and even for my own listening pleasure. There were pauses and gaps in the reading to camera that were fine when there's somebody's face to look at on screen, but they sounded like big yawning voids if you're just listening to the audio. So go through your own audio and cut it into shape. I'll quickly show you with one example here. As you know, I've already produced the Doctor Season 12 audiobook. I'm going to start to put together the Doctor Season 13, so I'm going to use that as an example in many cases for what I'm talking about. So in this case, I had copied all of the audio tracks from the original YouTube videos in order to edit them that way. In some cases, I had them already on my system, and if I had lost them for whatever reason, I downloaded them again from YouTube. Anyway, this would be perfectly fine in terms of quality. The first thing you'd need to do, of course, is cut off anything you don't actually need in it. Again, I'm using Audacity as my audio processing software. Here we go. You might think, what's it doing? It takes a while to load because it's big. So it was approximately, I think, a 45, 40 minute long episode, the first one. So this is The Doctor Season 13, Episode 1. So to be Chapter 1. And it will be chapter one on the audiobook as well. So 
you can see here, here's the, I'm just glancing at the entire audio output and I can see there are bits where it's higher than others. What I will do when I edit this properly is I will probably, anything way above the normal level, I'll manually bring down to a common level. But you don't need to go crazy and make everything exactly the same level yet. I'll come back to that when it comes to presenting it to Audible. Things that are more important are on this I have got intro and outro music. So I need to get rid of that first. So let's have a look. Uh, apparently not. I've already done it. So the first thing I've already done actually to this audio file is I've chopped off the intro and outro music from the file. So the first bit of editing has been done. The next thing I would do is I would go through the entire file and find if there are any spikes or things that are too high or too low in volume and try and level things a little before I submit it to Audible themselves. A quick check. At the beginning of the file, you need to leave a few seconds of what they call studio noise in order for them, I believe, for their own signal and noise processing, they do before publishing the book themselves. Another thing you might consider doing is listening to your studio noise as a whole and seeing if it needs further noise reduction. So if I were going to do noise reduction on this, I would highlight a patch which has no actual audio I want in it. I'd go to Effect noise reduction, get noise profile, and then if I was going to do this, I'm not going to because I've already cleaned it, I think, enough, but I would then go back to effect, noise reduction, and then do OK for noise reduction over the entire thing. I would normally find two or three passes maximum would be enough to clean up an audio file to sufficient standard. You might want to raise the overall volume level before doing this, before going through and cleaning uh, out any additional high patches and raising any low volume bits, but do not raise it to the maximum amount of volume you're raising you can because you're going to risk clipping. Plus, when it comes to submitting to Audible, you might need to use a process which itself would raise the level. So you don't want to introduce any bits of your signal getting clipped, which is where the waveform gets chopped top and bottom. Otherwise, you'll end up with a distorted sound. I'm not going to bore you by what, making you watch me leveling this a little, or not leveling yet, but uh, bringing manually the levels of the volumes up and down and cutting out any extra gaps. So there'll be a short jump where I come back into the video after I've done that bit of editing so you can see what the final waveform looks like. Okay, I'm back having done all the boring bits of editing to the file without you having to watch me. And as you can probably see in a moment when I make it a lot smaller, there we go. So it's fairly even. There are still some spikes in it, but there's nothing going up to the max, which is what you want. You don't want anything maxing out on the volume. But everything's been leveled to approximately a sensible range. This probably won't pass Audible's first check, but we'll deal with that when we get to the tackling the Audible sound quality checks. Before I move on from this, I will point out that you should set the project rate down here to 44100. This is because, I might as well tackle this now, this is the only acceptable rate that Audible will take for their audio files. So you have to set the record rate or the sample rate to 44100 hertz. If you've recorded like me at a different rate, I was actually recording at 48000 when I did my recordings. So I actually had to step it down a bit to 44100 makes no difference at all um, to the quality. Um, I still use an insane bitrate when I'm exporting this stuff anyway. In fact, I'll show you what I do. So file, export audio. I make up a name for it. I already have made up a name for it. I tend to change it to MP3 rather than the AIFF format because that, uh, it's the same format, just a different name, but it's absolutely pointless having that. Nobody ever uses that. So I change it to MP3, set to MP3 files already. The quality, I already have it set up to the stupidly insane 320 kilobits per second. Um, I usually have it set to bitrate preset. And the stereo, this is important, set the channel mode to stereo because they want their audio files at Audible to be in stereo, not joint stereo. Another thing, you'll, if you read enough of their documentation, you'll find out, but I'm telling you now, put it on stereo. At which point I would save it and it will export the thing and you will have your first version of the file ready for submission to Audible. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it once. So just to recap, you should have done some noise reduction on your recording. 
You don't need to use anything too fancy to do it. I'm using Audacity, a free audio processing piece of software, which I'd recommend anyone to get. It's available on, obviously, Linux, which I'm using, or Unix, but you can get it for Windows, for Mac, for pretty much anything you want. Make sure you've done a rough level adjustment to get things roughly in this sort of same range of volumes across your entire recording, but, you know, there'll be some more stuff to do later. Trust me. And while it's good to amplify it, because apparently Audible really likes a very high level of volume on their recordings, don't amplify it to the maximum. Make sure you've left some headroom, because you're going to need that too. You don't want it clipping your audio file because you've pushed it to the maximum volume available. Oh, and finally, make sure you've left a little bit of room at the beginning of empty noise. You can clip some of your file and paste it in place where there was no, nothing recorded uh, for your room noise, which is definitely one way of doing it. Uh, but... To be fair, if you've got the, your background noise down to nothing virtually by doing noise reduction, I don't think it really matters what you put there, but I make sure I start with a few seconds of silence first. So listen, here it goes. So I even left a little bit of a sound effect that's in the original recording coming in with the vocals at the beginning. Makes no difference. They didn't object last time I did it, so I've done that this time too. And also there are a few seconds of silence before that kicks in. Make sure there's some silence before your audio file and also at the end of the audio file. And if you don't believe me, let's run it to the end. Poink. And you can probably see actually on screen there's a little bit of silence at the end, but here is the very end of the audio file. And now we're out, but there were a few seconds of silence at the end. This is apparently to allow them to get the noise level right when they're processing your audio files i really don't know if it's needed or not but i leave it there because it's what they say they want so i've done it get yourself on acx otherwise known as audible now i can't remember exactly how i did this bit because it was a while ago and i've forgotten the details but i'm fairly sure that it was easier for me to get on ACX because I already had an Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing account, as you can see here, which I used to publish my various books through Amazon and Kindle Direct Publishing to Kindle, paperback and hardback copies. Uh, you can see there's my The Doctor Season 14 in preparation there, obviously only drafts only. There's The Doctor Season 13, which is live on Kindle eBooks and paperback and hardcover. And perhaps more importantly, well, actually, this is the demo we're using, so I might as well talk about it. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. We also have The Doctor Season 12, which is one that already is out as an audiobook. And I only just now, by looking through this page, realized how I got to find the link between Amazon and Audible. If you go right down the bottom of your Kindle Direct publishing page, right at the bottom, in the tiny, tiny, tiny small print, next to Kindle Direct Publishing select community create space right in the corner acx inside audiobook publishing made easy i am pretty sure i clicked on that link in order to join acx and i'm also pretty sure that acx automatically linked once i joined it to amazon because i use the same logon details for acx as i do for amazon so it's already linked together there are various things you probably need before you publish your work on ACX, including a cover for your audiobook. Of course, if you've already published on Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing, you could probably just use the same covers as you've used there, although I used mine with slight modification for the audiobook ones, but yeah, you would have the material already available if you've done a normal book before an audiobook. Also, the blurb, a lot of the stuff you need to write to describe the book will also be available to be taken from your Kindle Direct Publishing information, which is already there. I'll take you through starting a new project, since that's what we're doing, and I already have one to start publishing, so let's just see how it goes. So to create a new title, the best thing to do is add your title. As I see, it's linked to your Amazon one, so you can just look up stuff for you, Alexander Leeds in my case, which it has completely failed to find <laughs> the one I want. I uh, don't want that one, but at least it found one of mine. Uh, yeah, there's an awful lot of stuff if you do the search that is absolutely irrelevant. So you might want to change the search to be more specific. And there we go. So if you do the search specifically, it's found the Doctor Season 13, the Amazon Kindle paperback and hardback version. 
and you can then go, this is my book, which you kind of hope they already know, but never mind. You are claiming The Doctor Season 13 by Alexander Leiths. Choose how you prefer to produce your audiobook. I'm looking for someone to narrate and produce my audiobook. So if you're getting somebody else as your narrator, that's what you should choose, obviously. I already have my audio files for this book and I want to sell it. Well, that's obviously what I'm going for. And if you've already prepped your audio files, that's what you'll go for too. So I already have audio files for this book and I want to sell it. Continue. So the first thing you have to set up is territories and distribution. What territory rights do you own? Well, in my case, yeah, I own everything, everything over the entire world. It's mine. I own everything, uh, at least of the stuff I've written anyway. How would you like to distribute your audiobook? Exclusive gives you 40% royalties. Your audiobook was sold through our current retail partners, Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Or you could go for non-exclusive with 25% royalties, and your audiobook will sold through our current retail partners, Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, as above. But you can also sell it elsewhere if you choose. I think on the previous one, I'm pretty sure I just went for the exclusive one because I couldn't think where else I wanted to sell it. If you're more knowledgeable in the audiobook market than I am, you might want to go for the second option because you may have other ones you want to sell them through. But I just don't know enough. In what language is your audiobook written? Well, English. And that's it. That's all you have to set up on the first page. So what territories can you publish in? World. What distribution would you like? Exclusive or non-exclusive? And the language. And then you're done. So there's one more check that you have to agree to everything. I've reviewed it all, the license and everything else. Of course I have. And you click and agree and continue. Next comes the title details, uh, which you can change. It actually takes them from the Amazon information you've already got. A bit messily, it's left some of the typesetting in here, like the paragraph indentations and stuff, as paragraph, like hypertext. But uh, yeah, you can you can sort this out and fix it. Um, it this can be changed and edited as you see fit. Uh, I'm not going to do this now because I'm going to do it later uh, and make it a little bit better. I'm also I tend to change the end of the description a little so as to describe the other places on the audiobook where it's been published first. In fact. For the first one, for the Doctor Season 12, I talked about it being published on YouTube first in 2019, then in book form uh, with a different title initially on Amazon, and then its second version. All of this stuff I added to the description of the book on Audible. This one will require slightly less of that, although it was initially on YouTube. It hasn't had the same changes of titles and stuff because it was more slick. We already knew where we were going on the second run through, but I will still change this at a later date. All of this information until it's published can be changed, of course, except for choosing what type of distribution rights you go for. So if it's uh, exclusive or non-exclusive, that gets fixed from the point where you selected at the beginning. Obviously, in the print copyright information, print copyright owner will be yourself. And you need the full set of years it's been copyrighted for. So I'm guessing 2021 and 2022 because it's ongoing. And at some point, you might have to add 2023 as it clicks over into 2023. And audio copyright owner, although it's the same, usually, not always, I guess, you do still have to fill it in. I'm putting all the years in here just because when it was a YouTube series, it was obviously audio there too, so I'm going to put it up as copyright years for that too. Section 3, my book is fiction or non-fiction. In case you didn't know, it's fiction for me. Section four, best category of my book is, well, I'm going to guess it's sci-fi. And from memory, that was what I selected for the last one. Aha, science fiction and fantasy. There you go. Boink. Narrator, pretty sure I put me in for the last one. So I'm going to put me in for this one because it is me. Although there are additional voices on mine, which I credit in the opening and closing credits of the books. For these details, it's going to be the primary narrator they want. And for publisher, I learnt later, you can just put your own name in there even though you're publishing it through acx for legal purposes you go down as the publisher if you have received reviews and awards yeah you can fill that in if you like but uh, i'm not that lucky but anyway hopefully that's all you need to know about this section the first thing it wants you to do is enter the chapter names for your book and it wants you to be consistent in what you're doing as it's telling you here I'm pretty sure I was consistent in what I did for the last one, and I will use the format as in the actual print copy itself. 
Now, I don't know if this is new. I don't remember being able to import the table of contents from Kindle before, so I'll give it a go. And having just tried it, it does seem to have done a pretty good job. Chapter 1, Far, Far Away, Chapter 2, Night of the Museum, and so on. I can't see anything wrong with it so far. No, I think it's actually done it right. Can't see a single problem with it. Well done, ACX. That was not there, I think, the last time I used this. And we're now nearly done with all the things that are not audio file related. It does want you to upload cover art if you have it. Now, it just so happens I think I do have some. Notice that your cover art needs to be square and at minimum 24,000 by 24,000 pixels. And having just double checked, yes, I do have a square version already made up. So let's see if I can get it. Bang, and there you go. There's your cover in square format slapped into your audiobook details. Uh, like with The Doctor Season 12, I made a slight variation from the Kindle and print versions in that I put a very, very faint The Doctor top and bottom, one flipped upside down at the bottom, one flipped to the top, a bit like a playing card in a way, uh, just because I remember arguing with Amazon a lot about the cover art not matching the wording exactly of the book title. Now, although Amazon Kindle, I was able to force it through eventually, I just didn't want to face that battle with the audiobook. So I just added a very faint The Doctor so it had all of the text from the title on the cover. But otherwise, it's the same one designed by the incredible Svi Lebetkin, the rabbi from another planet, the best cover art guy I know. Which leads me on to a side topic of you might want to get someone good to design your covers for you. But anyway, we have the excellent cover up now. Let's save it. Notice the cover is required to approve your audiobook. You can't publish without the cover. At this point, that's all the pre-uploading audio to Audible stuff I want to talk about or need to talk about. So now we're going to move into the new section. Record additional audio needed. Now, you will need some additional audio, even if you've got all of your chapters read out already, because there are certain things that Audible require. Two of these are opening and closing credits, which have certain minimum requirements. The closing credits, in fact, the minimum requirements, that to just say the end on them. The opening credits require to say the title, the author, and some other key information. I haven't recorded them for Season 13 fully yet, but I can show you the Season 12 ones. So what I did for Season 12 was I recorded the vocals only, and then I put music under it for the final version. So the opening credits for Season 12 were as follows. Starts with the title, then the author, the editor in my case, the narrator, and additional narrators. And that was all the information I put in my opening credits. In the closing credits, they were very, very similar in fact. So in the closing credits we had the end, which is required. The title, author, editor in this case, narrator, primary, and additional narrators. And that was all the information I put in the closing credits. But that wasn't the finished product. I used the intro music that I've made for the YouTube series to liven up my intro and outro for the audiobook. So if you have such things available, you can do that. 
certain files they don't want music on, but these are ones where you can, and they specifically say you can put music on your intros and outros. And I thought it was a generally good idea. If I very quickly find it, I will play it at you. So the opening titles were like this. I imagine it's going to be quite faint in the background view because it's not pointing at the microphone. But it didn't sound half bad, if I do say so myself, when you have the music. Other audio you have to record separately are the chapter titles. Now, it's a little unclear when you first read their website. You might think, as I did that the chapter titles have to be separate audio files on their own. So you like have chapter one far, far away recorded by you saying it, and that's a separate audio file you're going to upload somewhere. Not quite true. You record all the chapter headings, like I just said, but you have to paste them yourselves to the beginning of the audio for each of your chapters. I have, of course, recorded the chapter titles in one long file. This is easiest in order of ensuring that they're the same level. The, the same audio quality. And you can just cut them out as you need them and paste them into the files as you require them. I'm going to stop it now. The final thing you also have to record is a retail sample. Now, I've not done that yet for Season 13. Obviously, I did do it for Season 12. The easiest way to demonstrate that is to take you to Amazon. Uh, you could go to Audible as well. In both cases, you'll see a little sample there, which is your retail sample file, which you have to upload. I made it by cutting parts of the first chapter together into a short five minute. By the way, five minutes is the maximum you can make your retail sample file. So don't go longer than five minutes, but I use the full five minutes virtually to cut down some of the dialogue really from the first chapter to give a sort of taste of what the chapter is all about. But it reads more like a radio play than an audiobook in the sample because a lot of the descriptive stuff I cut out. So I mean, I'll just start playing it. Again, you probably won't be able to hear it. But maybe you can hear it faintly in the background. And it starts with dialogue, and there's a lot of dialogue. I'm not saying that's the way you have to do it, but it's a way of doing it, and how I thought was the most effective way to give a snippet and a taster for the rest of the novel. I'm not going to play the full five minutes, though. So, prior to upload, to recap, make sure you've got all the audio files you need, your chapters pre-recorded, your chapter headings pre-recorded, your intro and outro vocals plus music if you wish, recorded, and ideally your retail sample recorded as well, although you might want to just finish getting your chapter one into perfect condition before you do that, or indeed whatever chapters you decide to take your retail sample from. Just because I did it from chapter one only doesn't mean you have to. So you make your retail sample as full of pizzazz and snappiness and punch as you can make it in whatever way you see fit. Get your audio to audible standard. Now, while you might think your audio files are perfect, uh, Audible won't accept them straight away, I'll bet. I mean, it's probably going to make a liar out of me now and accept it the first time I upload it, but I doubt whether that's going to happen. But anyway, before we even get to uploading it into the Audible interface, as you can see here, I need to add the chapter title to the start of the chapter one file. So the first thing I do is open up the chapter one file itself, at least my Audacity project file anyway which is currently saved at the wrong position. Before any sound kicks in, I need to insert the chapter heading. So I'm now going to open the chapter titles in Audacity separately. Now I can see that their volume levels are not quite the same, just by looking at them. So I'm going to insert that into the beginning of chapter 1. So I'm going to select a point before any audio comes in from the actual chapter one. 
that looks like a good place. I've already got it in my copy buffer, so here we go. Poink. And it's in there. Now, just visibly, I can see that that is at a lower level overall than the rest of the file. So I'm going to up the volume just on that section. And just make a rough guess. I imagine an up volume up thing of three would probably do it. This is, I've done a lot of messing, so I'm, I'm making a, probably a good guess. Let's have a look. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Now, you should probably double check, make sure the volume levels are in line with each other. That's not a million miles off, actually. Okay, I think I can probably just live with that. Um, all right, one more time just to make sure. I would normally do this with headphones in. I haven't got them in right now. I've got them speaker so you can hear what I'm doing. But actually, that sounds about right. Yeah, sounds good to me. I, I could live with that. So this is the first raw version of the file that's never gone through Audible yet. So let's export it. Actually, do I, I'm going to check the timing on that again. Second and a half before it kicks in. With, yeah, yeah. Take it a little bit out there. Make it a little bit shorter. Just don't want too much dead air. Yep, that looks right. That sounds and looks right to me. So let's export this as a new version of this file. Export audio. Again, I don't want it as an AIFF file. I want it as MP3, please. And we're going to call this version two because I already did version one of it. I'm saving it in my audiobook content. Again, insane bitrate stereo, not joint stereo. And the project file rate is already set to 44100. do not do not set it to anything else. Now, it's going to export away. While it's doing that, I can say, I might leave Audacity open, because as I've already kind of hinted, it's not going to accept this file straight off. So I can do some of the on-the-fly editing of the audio file and show you what I'm doing as uh, Audible rejects it, probably again and again. There are some basic things you can do to make it acceptable. So the audio file finally exported, and now it's ready for me to upload it and see if it'll pass the audio checks from Audible. So chapter one, far, far away. Let's have a look. So there's my version two I just put together. So it will upload. Obviously, it will take time. Okay, it's finished uploading. It's just now analyzing the file, and it will spew up an error message in about two seconds. There we go. It's like I knew what it was going to do. So issue found with the uploaded audio. Please refer to the audio analysis tab. Up the top it's there. You can just click here or at the tab at the top. One issue found in one file. I've only done one so far. This is the one where they found the issue. Boink. Right. RMS is too low. The razor level of this file, 4 decibels. So that's the RMS, it should be root mean square, I think, uh, but it's basically the average volume level is too low. So there are various steps you can go through to correct this. So one of the first things you want to do is see if you can up the volume of the actual file itself. Now, there's probably a bit of room in here. Let's have a look. Effect, amplify, not much. So you don't really want to amplify it any higher than a new peak amplitude of minus one. This is to give you some headroom so you're not clipping your files. So that's about as much amplification as I can get away with across the whole file. So 1.1 amplification leaves my new peak amplitude still minus one decibels, which is just enough to stop the thing from clipping. Uh, even though it says I've got allow clipping turned off, you'll find if you put it to the maximum, it will clip top and bottom. Uh, it will still clip it even if you get to, if you have zero, um, on the new peak amplitude instead of a negative number, it will cause problems, trust me. So here we go, let's see what happens this time. So we're back and it's saved the new version of the file, so let's see what happens. We go back to the Upload Manager, and obviously I'm going to browse for that again. Oh yeah, Replace. Go 
again. So once again, it'll take a while to upload. I'll skip in the video so you don't have to sit here watching the upload things crawling across. Okay, it's analyzing again. I wonder how long it'll take to do that. Okay, it's come up with an error again, which doesn't surprise me. So we go back to Auto Analysis tab. Have a look what it says this time. Okay, this time it's 2.9 decibels too low. Before it was 4. So still some work to do. So back to the file in Audacity. We can use a completely different effect, not amplify this time. We have no more room to amplify, really. So we can use the leveler function on Audacity. Now, on past experience with the Doctor Season 12, two, three passes with the leveler max was enough to normally get it through. So let's see what happens. Leveler, there you are. I never changed anything, so degree of leveling was moderate. The threshold minus 70. I just left it to do its own thing and let it go. It's pretty quick. Now what the leveler should do is things that are too quiet, it amplifies them. Things that are too noisy, it should bring them down, which is why it shouldn't have made the maximum amplitudes go really any higher on the very highest things in here. But what you could see on screen, you could see higher bits going higher, but uh, it should average things out and make the dynamic range a little more narrow. But anyway, we'll see what it's done. Right, so now that the file's been leveled, let's go back to the upload manager so we can put the new version up. We'll see the action you choose is replace, which gets rid of the old version, more or less. Browse for your new, uh, new version of the file. There it is. Very good. Again, it'll take a while to upload, so I'll skip to the end of that. Okay, so now it's analyzing the file again after our first leveling. Let's see what it does this time. And amazingly, after one set of leveling, it seems to have passed. There are no problems. Wow. Okay, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. But then again, the audio quality, I think, for Season 13 was slightly better than Season 12 in terms of the dynamic range to begin with on YouTube. So, yeah, I guess it was a little easier for it. So we've done one amplification, one leveling, and that's got it through. So just to remind you, I'm recording on a laptop using a, using a very basic microphone, a very basic audio capture piece of hardware. You don't need to have a professional recording studio. By the way, on this page, you can now listen to see how well it sounds. And as I'm listening to it, I'm not hearing too much clipping. I'm not hearing any distortion. So it does seem to have done a good job. Hmm. There we go. We don't listen to the whole thing. So, yes, there you go. Um, that was how to upload Audible acceptable audio files to Audible for your audiobook. But that's all I can really say about uploading the audio material to Audible. It's not as hard as you think, and so don't get dispirited and don't get discouraged. You can do this. Now, let's move on to the last section. Odds and Ends Oddities of Audible, etc. So once you've got all your files in place and you've edited everything and you've got everything as you want it to be, cover art included, your descriptions, etc. You can then say I'm done and publish your audiobook. Now when you do that, they will warn you that it takes them 10 days to do a more thorough check of your audio files. The initial checks they've done, as we've seen just now, to make sure the audio files are up to scratch are good, and I would say they're probably all that's needed, really, because my lot passed without any problems the first time, but they do then spend 10 days reviewing your files to make sure they really are up to standard. They say it takes 10 days, but I had to prod them after 11 or 12 days because that amount of time had passed, and they still hadn't passed it. And I was kind of keen to get the Doctor Season 12 out as an audiobook before Christmas. And we were talking about the beginning of December when this was happening. Nerve-wrackingly close to missing the Christmas rush. Anyway, after I emailed them, they very quickly didn't even 
respond to the email in terms of words. It just the next day, bang, the audiobook was available on Audible and Amazon. And apparently iTunes, which brings me on to the other weirdo idiosyncrasy of the audiobook market. Apparently it was available on iTunes almost as soon as it was available on Audible and Amazon. However, you can't find it for love nor money if you, if you do a search on the internet using search engines because iTunes are a weird little insular world which do not speak to the internet generally. So if you search for my titles, for example, The Doctor Season 12, and put iTunes after it, it will not throw up anything. You can only find iTunes stuff if you're in the iTunes app or logged in, I think, on their webpage with an iTunes account. Otherwise, you will not be able to see it. So don't worry if you think your book isn't on iTunes, but do what I did and email them and say, is my book available on iTunes? Can you send me a link? And that's what they did. They sent me a link. So I can go to the iTunes page because they've sent me a link to it, but you cannot search on a search engine for your books or material on iTunes, apparently. Not to worry, though, because your book is visible on Amazon and Audible and search engines through those means, because they do apparently like the internet at Amazon and Audible and want your stuff to be visible, unlike iTunes, which is just a weird little Apple world of weirdos who don't apparently talk to the internet. Anyway, that's about all the odds and ends I can think of, because there wasn't that much to talk about. It was just done and dusted and was out there. So I hope this video has been useful. I hope I've given all the information you need to get your own work out there and don't get discouraged. It is not impossible to produce audio files of a standard acceptable for Audible. No matter what various negative people have said on the internet, even if you recorded in a shed on a single cheapo microphone into your laptop, you can make it good enough for Audible. Don't worry. And with that, all I can now say is I hope you'll join me for whatever the next video is. And until then, to all my watchers and listeners, take care.